Hello. Welcome. Matt is trying to find some lovely cruise creature photos. And we're on here last minute, so we may or may not chat. But nobody's chatting with me yet, so maybe I'll just chat with myself. How are you out there? Having a good Saturday? We've had a sleepy Saturday. We took a nap. Hi, Todd. Welcome. How are you doing, Todd? Did you print your, your crock shovels, plows? I told Matt we need those for when we go up north. Hi, Meg. Okay. I think I got everything loaded. You good? <laughs> yeah, as good as I'm going to be. Hello, everybody. And by everybody, looks like we got two people here. <laughs> Woohoo! I mean, we got to be better about, you know, Letting people know we're doing things and all that sort of thing. We like to decide last minute. Meg can't stay long. So it's just going to be us and Todd. That's cool. It's just like last week. <laughs> well, that's okay because, Todd, you are the inspiration of this episode. So you were in our last episode and you inspired this episode because um, all of our plans for the entire week went pear-shaped. Uh, we were supposed to be in Indianapolis right now. And, uh, and that, and then we were going to do a podcast tonight with actually some of our friends at this time. Yeah. But we hadn't made that. And then everybody on the planet that we know that we were going to visit got COVID. So, um, we didn't go North. So <laughs> we're here still. And we had to postpone our, our trip home for two weeks, which, uh, threw us off quite a bit. So yeah, we are, we're like, um, uh, don't know what we're going to do the podcast on. And then thankfully Todd just happened to post in the fantastic cruising community asking about tips on purchasing snorkeling gear. And I was like, I did a whole series on that, but it's been a long time and needs an update. So uh, we may revisit that series, but tonight what we're going to cover in the podcast is we are going to, um, we're going to basically talk about just the basics uh, if if you're if you're interested in, in snorkeling gear, and so uh, even though we will start the podcast officially in a minute, normally we go over that we're doing the podcast, so we may or may not be able to interact tonight. If you have questions um, as we go or about snorkeling gear and people that that join us in uh, as we go, go ahead and post them. I'll try and keep track of them. If I if I don't if I miss it, then just post a question again until I see it. Uh, so. You can, um, yeah, we can try and answer your questions about like snorkeling gear and stuff like that. And hi, then, JT. Sorry, I need to say oh, hi to people. Hi, JT. And, and hello. He, he's saying good morning to Down Under, so they must be in here somewhere. Good morning from Down Under. Oh, from Down Under. Okay. Okay. Well, good morning or good. Whoever Facebook user is. Yes. Um. Anyway, also, I don't think Tony Dials is in here right now, but... um. He also inspired this episode because it's his cruise creature that he requested uh, like a couple weeks ago that we're going to do tonight. So, so if he's not in tonight, I don't know what his plans are. And I know he's been on, I think he's on the men though. Yeah. Um, maybe he'll watch it down the road. Makes Otherwise it's a really cool cruise creature. So I, when he, when he suggested, I was like, Oh yeah, I don't think we've done that one. Meg said beginner snorkeling gear is my question. We will cover all yeah, of that. that's really going to be the focus of this episode. So, so if you are somebody that snorkels or interested in snorkeling, you don't have your own gear or you have gear and it's rubbish, um, we're going to help you. So, <laughs> JT wants to know what you're drinking. I am drinking, I am drinking a Pirate Republic Brewing Company Golden Haze of Piracy Belgian Wit, uh, wheat, and it is. Why do I always turn my hand on it? There you go. Uh, yeah, it's the brewery in Nassau. Yeah. So right at the port. So they are now selling some of their beer. We've seen a couple different types of their beer at Total Wine. And then they did like a 
they were supposed to be at this beer event at the public screen wise, right by the aquarium. We went, we think we saw one guy there with a hat on, but they only had one beer on tap there. It was kind of weird. Um, not because of them, just, it just was a weird, it just didn't seem like an event, but anyway, um, but yeah, we're hoping that they're going to start selling their beer in the, in Publix down here in Florida. So yeah. yes, Meg, that is the one that I liked and I still like it, but it's still a little more beery than I like. I think I just like <laughs> really, really liked it in Nassau because I was really hot. It's still good. It's just a little more beery yeah. than my normal preference. I think it's really good. It's, it's, uh, I would say it's, it's like an upgraded blue moon, um, Ho garden kind of beer. Yeah. It's very good similar on a, to Ho good on a hot day with like an orange slice in it. Very refreshing. Dan beer. said nice hat. Thank you. Yes. I, I was, uh, I, I bought this hat for the trip up and I thought it'd be appropriate. Uh, plus I'm teaching a, a homeschool class on Jacques Cousteau in a couple months. And so I'm going to wear this hat. Not that the, none of the homeschool kids will get it, but that's okay. I will. Uh, but, but then, you know, when we were doing snorkel gear, I thought it'd be appropriate to wear it tonight. Although it is kind of making my head itch a little bit. Um, kind of, JT kind of said he'll stick with his bourbon. Yeah. JT, I, you know, I, you know, I'm with you on the bourbon. I, I used to be more of a beer guy and now I don't really drink beer that often, but we were running by behind and this sounded really good and it tastes it's actually hitting the spot Is it? pretty nicely right now right. i'm gonna sneeze <laughs> pardon me yeah. hi michael so i'm gonna hey michael. before we start i'm gonna show off my new exciting say that for the end you want me to say that yeah okay i'm gonna save it till the end sorry <laughs> <laughs> let's start this podcast okay let's i have to remember how to do that how do I do that? Come with me, we're going on a fantastic cruise. Pick your destination with news tips and reviews. But here is an item you might not have thought of. All of the things under the water. Nature surrounds us with elegant features. You can't go on a cruise and not see the creatures. So let's make some magic. Let's get aesthetic. Instantly classic. Maybe romantic. The wildlife around you. Cinematic on your fantastic cruise. Bon Beanie and welcome to... No. Let me start again. Von Beanie, and thank you for joining us on another episode of Fantastic Cruising. I am Matt. And I am also Matt. That is uncomfortable in so many ways. <laughs> and uh and and yeah, so so welcome though to this podcast. If you're new to this podcast, thank you for coming by. If you're watching on YouTube, hello. If you're listening in the future, hello. We do a cruise podcast. I don't know why I'm saying this, like, you know, just say, in if, case. If we're talking to new people, then I am not actually Matt. But, to, well, I think the reason I'm saying that it, is because tonight our topic is going to be cruise related, but not cruise, not about cruising. So, but it's very cruise related. We got this suggestion <laughs> from our guest who was on last week, Todd, who, su who suggested we do a, an episode on buying snorkeling gear. And I thought that was brilliant. Um, so that's what we're going to do. And it was we're great because we we didn't know what we were going to do the podcast on. And then he was like, hey, this. And we're like, great. <laughs> so, uh, yes, we are here. If if we said that we were going to be in Indiana and Missouri uh, or not, because, you know, the pandemic <laughs> hit people and we have to stay here for a couple of weeks. But um, but all is well, and and we're just going to be here now for tonight. So, yeah. So we're, let's let's get into it. If you guys have questions and you are in the chat, uh, normally we don't always interact with the chat so much when we're doing the podcast part. We do a little before, a little after. But tonight we are looking for input. And if you are listening in the future and you have a question that doesn't get answered in this podcast about snorkeling, uh, then you can send us an email to fantasticcruising at gmail.com and we will do our best to answer that for you. Yes. Okay. So let's get started. I know um, I know we got a couple of questions already. Meg said something about uh, beginning snorkeling gear. 
And then um, boop, 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 boop. And Todd said, so many choices on Amazon, hard to pick the right one. And then there's lots of comments about Reno and beer. So anyway, <laughs> <laughs> that's okay though. We like that too. Um, so when you're, when you're buying snorkeling gear, we're going to kind of break this down. There's really, we could do a whole series and we may on snorkeling gear and stuff, but really there's three basic parts or pieces of equipment that you need to know about when snorkeling for most cruise excursions or just typically snorkeling in general. There's so much more, but the three basic ones are going to be, of course, a snorkel because you just cannot snorkel without a snorkel. That is one thing you will never be able to do. Uh, also a mask. You could theoretically snorkel without a mask, but I don't know why you would. It'd be like renting a movie and sitting in the other room and watching it. Well, it's you can't see it or hear it. So, <laughs> well, I mean, people wear goggles. Yeah, yeah. Don't, which is technically not a mask. No, nah, don't don't do that. But it's though. wrong. Don't, yeah, don't do that. You don't want to do that unless you're swimming laps. Uh, the other thing is fins, of course. So snorkel fins, mask. These are three basic components. And uh, and and the first question that you have to answer for yourself is that. Uh, is, is whether or not you actually want to buy any of these things. So do you want to buy a mask? Do you want to buy fins? Do you want to buy a snorkel? And, and that is going to be a very personal question. I can't tell you, Kimber can't tell you what you should or should not do, but I can give you some information that can help you make that decision. So let's start with, uh, should you buy, um, should you buy a mask? So, what do you think, Kimber? Should you buy a mask? I think... I mean, a Halloween mask. I, mean, <laughs> I, I think it slightly depends on the situation. Okay. If you're going to snorkel once in your life, ever, no. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, a mask is going to be probably the most expensive of mask fins and snorkel, the most expensive of those. Um, it is also the most important one of those, in my opinion. It's the one that you... if you want to spend the most money on. So if you're only going to snorkel one time, it's not going to be worth it. If you're going to snorkel three times in the next decade, uh, it, it's probably not worth it. But if you're going to, if you're the type of person that is in an area, whether it be a cruise or whatever, that you can snorkel a couple times a year and you're going to do that for a few years in a row, it's probably worth it to buy a mask. Uh, you can get a mask for a very inexpensive price these days. Uh, we're going to get a little bit more into that in a minute, but I I would tell you that you can get a good mask, a, a reasonable good mask for forty bucks, maybe less if you find a good sale. But you can also get a complete burning piece of trash for thirty bucks. So, <laughs> uh, and you can also get one for ten bucks. Probably you could probably find a mask for ten bucks. Now so we'll come we'll come back to the mask. Okay, let's talk about. Uh, fins. Should you buy fins? Um, not necessarily, but it depends. Um, I'd say because there's like the places that you rent that like give you those little stubby things. Right. If that's what you're going to get, I'd say get your own fins. Yeah. I, look, most in most scenarios, you are going to be given fins on like a snorkeling excursion. If you go to the beach, you will, if it, if there's decent snorkeling, you're probably going to have the opportunity to rent. And if you do, it's going to include mask fins and snorkels. In most cases, um, fins are probably not the most important thing that you need to worry about buying. However, the dog is like making a lot of noise in the <laughs> other room. However, uh, you can really short yourself if you don't have fins. Uh, I would say that in most cases, fins are something you're going to want when you're in the water and you don't want those little stubby things. Don't buy those little stubby things. Look, if, if you like the little stubby things, they're fine for like swimming around a swimming pool, but in a practical application, they are very slightly better than just swimming in your feet, which are not that efficient. For swimming, especially if there's any kind of current or if you have to go any sort of distance or anything like that, do yourself a favor, 
get some fins. So most case, most of the time though, the fins that you get on snorkeling excursions are fine. Mm -hmm. And, and so, and they're pretty generic sizes. You don't have to worry too much. They'll have like large, medium, small, and they, they'll run the gambit, you know, like one size will fit like three shoe sizes and they work pretty well. Uh, but if you are somebody like Kimber and myself who takes your snorkeling very seriously, I would say buy a pair of fins. Uh, you can get a pair of fins pretty cheap and get away with it. Um, this is something that you can buy at a local like sporting goods store, 20, 30 bucks. You can get a, you can get a pair of fins. You're good. You're done. You know, you're going to have that pair of fins. They're going to be fine. The disadvantage to a pair of fins is that you got to lug them around with you. They're big. Um, you've got to take them with you. If you're, if you're flying to your destination, it's just more luggage. So, you know, it depends on your scenario, your situation. I would say if you're a person that's going to snorkel um, a few times a year, getting a cheap pair of fins is probably worth it. What about the snorkel, Kimbra? Um, so the snorkel is, in my opinion, I would say get a snorkel. It's cheap. You don't have to get anything fancy. And otherwise, you're like using a snorkel that a bunch of other people have had in their mouth. Yes, they are washed and sanitized. Supposedly. But, I mean, you can get like a $5 snorkel and it's fine. Right, right. I would tell you that you can go, you can spend a lot of money on a snorkel. I, I would never recommend spending a lot of money on a snorkel. Snorkels come with all sorts of potential bells and whistles. And in my experience, none of them are worth it personally. I mean, that's a little bit of my opinion. But any snorkel that you get from a rental, as far as functionality, it's going to be fine. But it is dependent on how comfortable you are putting something in your mouth that has been in somebody else's mouth. Some places will actually sell you a cheap snorkel along with the rental gear. Whatever. You can get a snorkel for like 10 bucks. And if you're uncomfortable with um, putting a snorkel in your mouth that's been in somebody else's mouth, you know, pick one up. They can be a little bit cumbersome to pack, but they're not as bad as fins. Yeah. So, so bottom line of the three items is if you're going to snorkel a few times a year, get your own gear. Yes. And especially a mask. Yes. Especially a mask. So let's go backwards from this now. Okay. And let's, and let's look at, let's start with fins. So we have, we have a couple different types of fins here behind you, behind me. Now this this is not the fin that you're going to buy as a beginner. Okay. This, but I, I have this fin for a reason. This is an expensive fin. It's probably way overpriced, but the point I want you to notice is that it's a, what's called a boot fin. And what that means is that you just slip your bare foot into this and, and you're good to go. They're sized pretty specifically. Uh, this one is actually a large, so it's still going to give you a little bit of a range, but probably just maybe a couple shoe sizes instead of like three or four shoe sizes with one with an adjustable strap. The advantage of this is that you don't have to bring along like scuba booties to put in so that you don't get blisters. Um, they're really fast and quick to slip on and off. They do the trick. They work well. I have a cheap pair of these somewhere that were literally, I paid 20 bucks for them from a sporting goods store or a boating store or something like that. But this pair I think was more like 150. So you can spend a lot more. Why is this pair so expensive? Because one, it's Scuba Pro, and that's just a brand thing. <laughs> they make quality. They're like the Apple of scuba gear. But also, they've got all they've got all this fancy stuff to you know make it more hydrodynamic and powerful and all. Yeah, whatever. For somebody like me, that might make a difference. For the average snorkeler, you're not going to really notice that much of a difference. The average snorkeler, I would say, is probably in the water for. 20, 30 minutes at a time, maybe 40 minutes, you're not going to notice a difference. If you're snorkeling for like six hours, like I would like to do, you're going to start to feel that difference. If you're trying to swim deep underwater and stuff, that's where those things are going to make a difference. That's where you're going to want to start to look at spending a little bit more money on your gear. But you can also get away without doing that. I did it for years and was fine, you know, so, but it can, it can help. It's like expensive equipment for anything else when it comes to fins. Um, it's not going to make you a better snorkeler. It's just going to make things a little bit easier and a little bit more efficient. 
Uh, the good thing about this is that I know one of the questions was working with a dive shop or buying on Amazon, all the choices of the Amazon. The good thing about fins is that I think it's a piece of gear that you can pick up anywhere and you're going to be okay. Just don't get the little baby fins unless, unless you've tried them and like them, but I don't, I don't know. They just don't, they're not very effective is all I'm saying. If you're in the ocean, but they're better than nothing. That's true. They're better than nothing. <laughs> I see people snorkeling without fins and I'm just like, go oh, get some fins. You don't know what you're missing by not having fins. You're making your life so much more difficult wearing yourself out. Anyway, uh, here's another style of fin here. Now this is, this is one with a strap here. Uh, these are also expensive fins because they're Kimbra's fancy diving fins, <laughs> but you can get fins like this that are also very inexpensive. If they're a big, heavy fin like this, you are going to have to wear a scuba booty with that, which is another expense that you're going to have to incur. But you can get the kind that are cheaper that you don't have to do that. You may get blisters if you're prone to blisters uh, if you, and you don't want to spend money on scuba booties, which can be 20, 30, 40, 50 bucks. Um, you can just wear a sock underneath them and that'll keep you from getting a blister, just like if you're wearing tennis shoes or, or something like that. But um, but but that's the thing. You can you can get inexpensive fins, and they'll do good enough, and you can get them from anywhere. Try them on, order them on Amazon. You know, as long as you can return them. Um, if you want to know, you know, well, how do I know which one to get on Amazon? I would say go for one of the more um, well-known brands for for dive gear uh scuba pro you can get but they're you're going to pay a lot more but things like cressy is really good tusa is really good aqualung aqualung is good but be careful with aqualung because they will make like with fins it's not that big of a deal but they'll make a cheap line of stuff that you'll see in like walmarts and targets and stuff that is garbage so uh be a little careful with aqualung but aqualung does also make really quality gear and you Atomic. know um, atomic, but you're going to spend a lot of money yeah. on atomics. But anyway, look at the reviews. You can always send us an email. If you're like, Hey Matt, Kimbra, I'm thinking about getting these fins. Send us an email and we'll, we'll tell you what we think of them. Um, so, so there you go. And then of course you can get, like I see Meg saying fancy and bright and, uh, she's, you know, yeah, you could, you can get different colors and things and certain certain brands will come in different color styles or some will have more options than others. And so if that's something that's important to you, you might end up having to spend a little bit more money or have a harder time finding that perfect fin. But as far as functionality goes, the color is, is really not going to make any <laughs> difference at all. So um, now, okay, so that's fins and Let's see if we're, I don't know if we're missing. I know there's a lot of. Uh, um, I don't think we've missed anything that we won't answer yet. Okay. Because okay. there's been some questions that I think we will get to. Okay. All right. Um, yeah. And I see some, the Gaylers say no foot cramps. Yes. That is one thing if you, and that's again, goes back to how long you're snorkeling for. If you're snorkeling for 25 minutes, you're probably going to be okay. Uh, you may find though that you get a certain style of fin that just, you're just not compatible with, but most of the time that's not the case. It might be the way you're kicking your feet or something too, that you can adjust. Try, I always recommend if you can, if you have the opportunity, try your gear out like in a swimming pool in a controlled environment uh, so that you can just get used to it make sure it works before you like head off on a cruise. If you are buying your own gear, but for the most part, you're going to be okay. It's when you are swimming in heavy currents. It's when you are swimming long distances. It's when you are swimming, for a long time when things like foot cramps start to really uh, become an issue if you have cheaper gear. Like like these fins here, I love these fins, but uh, I do have a problem if I use them for too long where I get some, some rubbing on the top of my foot. And that's just, I mean, it's gotten better as I've broken them in, but yeah. well, it, it's, just like, a, it's just a reality even, of, of it. Even my fins, I have to, because I'm like, like blister foot, person i have to have taller booties because even right. with regular booties like the shorter ones i'll get blisters and i love i have some little short fins that are similar to her pink ones um and they've got this strap which is this is like an elastic this is where you're getting more pricey but you know you're paying for these 
things that are going to make your life easier, but they're not necessary. But this is like a really easy to pop this on your foot. Um, but and they and they are stronger fins. That's why you need the the booty. The advantage of the booties is <laughs> the advantage of the booty. The <laughs> advantage of the booties is that in a lot of cases, places where you're snorkeling. They might be rocky and there might might be sharp stuff in the water. So having a pair of booties to wear with the thick tread can be very good. In fact, I see that I see down under cruisers in here. Um, they just put out a video today. Go check it out after our live about first aid kits. And one of the things Alana brought up is wearing some like water shoes. If you're at a beach, especially a coral reef, because there are things in parts of the world that could could sting you or bite you or things like that. And so uh, just, just a typical pair of good water shoes or definitely scuba booties is going to prevent a lot of that from happening. So go check their video out. Uh, it's a really good video. So, um, so yeah, so that's fins, I think. And, and I would say fins would be the, the third thing I would recommend buying. Like if you're going to buy snorkel gear, uh, definitely buy a mask. And then snorkel depends on your comfort, but they're not, you can get a cheap one. And then the fins would be the last thing I would recommend buying partially just because of carrying them back and forth. All right, let's talk about snorkels. So, because okay. it, it is snorkeling. So we should talk about snorkels. I've got a few. You have another one I've there. I've got one here. Okay. Yep. So I will tell you again, for me, the snorkel is a very simple piece of equipment. It is a tube that you stick in your mouth and it sticks out of the water and you pull air in and push air out. And that's as simple as it gets. Now, when you swim underwater, you can do fancy things like come up and pop the snorkel up and you've blown all the air out or you could blow the water out when you get to the top. And there are, there are things that you can get on your snorkels that will um, kind of help with this. But in my opinion, the things that, help you with those in the long run they make it harder they make it less efficient like it's kind of like training wheels um they help you at first but eventually they might just get in the way my recommendation is um learn how to snorkel properly and you won't have any you won't need these things uh, but but for some people that that is a little bit my opinion some people do like them so let's talk about so what some of these things are. This is Kimbra's first snorkel here. And it's got two features on it that uh, some people like, but I think are unnecessary. So the first feature is that this top, you can see it's kind of, it's not a, just an open hole, okay? This is what's called a semi-dry snorkel. So what does that mean? Uh, it means that when Kimbra's swimming in the water with this and a wave comes over or she... Well, really just that's probably pretty much the only case scenario. A wave comes up, um, it's gonna hit this splash guard and she's not as likely to get that water in the tube and therefore breathe it into her mouth. Okay, so that's that's a semi-dry snorkel. I would say of all the features of snorkels, this is the one that bothers me the least because it doesn't really get in my way. It's just unnecessary, I think, for once you master the techniques of snorkeling. But for a new snorkeler, if you're gonna be snorkeling someplace with a lot of rough water, you're not gonna snorkel that often. This is not a bad feature to have. Uh, the second feature is this down here. Um, this is what is called a purge valve. And the purge valve, what it does is when you come up out of the water or you just get water in there and you blow through it, water shoots out here, but it'll also shoot through this purge valve. This is nice because it means you don't have to expend as much energy to exhale the water or exhale and get the water out. Okay. Um, Larry, you did not miss the mask part yet. So don't, don't worry about that. My problem with this is if you are trying to clear that water out of your snorkel really fast, um, and you're blowing and it's going this way and this way, you're not gonna be as effective. Think about if you have like a, like a straw or something that bends in two places and you exhale through it, you're not gonna get as much force because it's going through two different directions. Whereas if it's just one simple tube, it's all going right out. But you know, it's kind of a little bit of a safety net. It's a bit of a comfort thing. Uh, for me, it, it gets in the way. 
It makes the snorkel more expensive. It's another thing that can break on it. I'm not a fan, but a lot of people do like the purges. And to be honest with you, it's hard to find a snorkel these, these days that don't have a purge on them. But there are there are some that do. And actually, my favorite snorkels are usually less expensive than snorkels like oh, this. this. This one here was more, well, it's brand. It's yeah, the brand that's name. The brand, yes. <laughs> so uh, some other features about this snorkel that are kind of cool. So snorkels have a snorkel keeper, which can be a simple double ring that hooks through the strap on your mask. This one has a proprietary Cressy. This is a Cressy brand snorkel that clips on there. It's kind of nice because it's got a little bit of, of uh, movement on here. It's also nice because it's it's got a little... You can clip it off. Yeah, I don't know how it works with yeah. your snorkel. It's fine. <laughs> there you go. So you can take the, the snorkel completely off and then the clip stays on your mask. Yeah. So, which is cool because if you put in your mask in like a mask bag or something, that makes it a lot easier. Now, Cressy's done something very clever. They've changed the shape of this tube so it's not just a cylinder. And that means that you can't use regular snorkel keepers very easily on it because they just don't fit. Plus, you got to get them over this dry fit and stuff. I think this is removable. Is it removable? I don't know. It, it just looks like it, it is. might be. I don't know. I just now, it might while be. you were looking at it. Yeah, I bet you could, I bet you could just press in here and pull it off of there. Yeah. But anyway, it means that if you, this breaks, it's going to be more expensive to replace because a regular snorkel keeper is like a couple bucks, but this is probably special order and all kinds of, of nonsense there. Um, it does have this flexi bit here, which is nice because especially for scuba diving, this is nice if you use a snorkel while you dive, which I don't typically, but because it just kind of hangs out of your way. It just makes it a little more comfortable though. Um, one of the things that can happen is you can get jaw fatigue if you're snorkeling for a really long time. And this makes it a little bit more, uh, a little less tension on the jaw. Uh, although one thing, one of the main things that causes jaw problems is if you're clenching your jaws, <laughs> which Kimber knows all about that. Yeah, I'm a, uh, I'm real bad about that. Now this is actually a snorkel that my mom has used in the past. I think it was, her snorkel she's used. It's got that same thing. It's a Cressy. I, I like Cressy brand. Really flexible. Look how flexible that is. It's nice. It's got the purge on it, which again, not a big fan of, but it's all you can get. But this one, and my mom likes this kind of snorkel. This is what's called a dry snorkel. So the difference between a dry snorkel and a semi-dry snorkel is this actually has a little floaty in here. So when you go, when this goes underwater, it floats up and it blocks this tube. So you will not get water in this tube. It's really hard to get water in the tube. Now, this is great if you are a very inexperienced snorkeler and you're in choppy water or you are tilting your head the wrong way and you're getting, you would normally get water in there and then you're like choking and stuff. But, um, so that's good for that. It's good for that. But what it also does is it cuts your air off. So you're not getting water in your mouth, but you're also not breathing. And I've had issues with this where I've, it's actually made me a little bit nauseous from, from this. When I was, I was already on a boat that was wavy and then I got in the water and usually that's, I'm okay after that, but I couldn't, I felt like I couldn't get enough air and it may, it may have just been a coincidence. But what I don't like about this feature on this snorkel is that it does cut my air off when I'm trying to breathe. I have a technique, which I'll tell you about um, maybe a little bit. That'll, that'll help you with this so you don't have to worry about getting water in your snorkel. But when you go underwater, then you have this whole thing of air going underwater with you. So you go underwater and now you are you have a tube of air. Well, air is buoyant. I don't want to be buoyant when I go underwater. I want to sink. The more buoyant I am, the more energy it takes for me to kick down. And the more energy it takes, the less time I can spend under the water. It's all about being efficient. So this is not a good snorkel for you if you want to swim underwater and explore underneath the water. If you're going to stay at the surface, you don't snorkel that often. Um, a dry snorkel is okay. I'm not a fan, but you might you might really like it. My mom likes that feature. So there you go. Now, what kind of snorkels do we like, Kimbra? A tube. <laughs> so Matt has like... Like he said, that pink one that he showed at first was my first one. And it was fine, but he always talked about, you know, he just liked the tube snorkel. So we were in a dive shop one time and I was like, look, it's pink. It matches all of my stuff. So, of course, I bought it for way too much money um, because it's Scuba Pro. It's the brand name. That's that's what you get when you buy 
that fancy brand name, but still I wasn't that expensive. It wasn't, it was, it was $25, which is not bad, but it's just a tube. But, a, but a normally a snorkel like this is probably going to be five, $10. I mean, well, no, I mean for this quality of snorkel, it's going to be probably 20 bucks. Okay. 25 bucks is not that unreasonable. I love this. Yeah. The, this snorkel is great. And, and here's, here's the difference between a $5 snorkel and a $25 snorkel. Uh, a $5 snorkel is rigid plastic. It's going to crack and and fall apart. It's probably going to last you, depending on how often it's in the sun and how often, it's probably going to last you a year or two. And that's about it. This snorkel is flexible. It's made of high quality silicone and it's comfortable. It's got a really comfortable bite. And it's just, it's just a quality piece like this, of gear. This also, like, I like how much this rotates yep. because then it goes exactly how I need it. I yeah. love this snorkel worth every penny. Yeah. So, you know, that that's the snorkels. Those are the snorkels I like 25 bucks, 20. And again, if you don't get one with scuba but pro on it, it's just a two, <laughs> like there's, right. there's nothing on top, nothing at bottom. I've got sides. another snorkel that roll, it can literally roll up into like a, a bag which makes it really easy to travel with but um but yeah so so snorkels are easy you can get if you want to buy a snorkel you can eat it's something you can easily buy off of amazon uh because it's one size fits all the only thing you're not going to know is whether you like certain features you're not going to know that until you try it in the water anyway so you just kind of have to guess at that unless you have an opportunity to use it. Most rental snorkels that I've seen are either basic plastic cheap tubes or sometimes they'll have um, semi-dry snorkels. I don't usually see the dry snorkels in the rental spaces that I've experienced. I'm sure there are some out there though. So, uh, but yeah. So next up though are masks and masks are the most important things. And before we get into masks that that I would recommend for everyone, I'm going to talk about a mask that is very popular right now that I would recommend for some people. And that is the full face mask right here. So these are really popular. And I, I remember when they came out probably about, I don't know, six, six years ago or so I started seeing them and they were like really hard to get. And, and now they're everywhere and they're super um, easy to find. This is kind of a mask and a snorkel. This is a full face mask. Um, First thing I want to tell you about this mask is that they've gotten some bad press because some of the designs that have come out, um, they have they don't have a way for the air that you exhale to make it out of the snorkel and you end up with carbon dioxide building up in your mask. Uh, this has been a real problem in Hawaii, actually, because I think the snorkeling in Hawaii, there is a lot more um, stress there because of waves and currents and stuff like that. If you get a full face mask, um, you want to make sure that you get a decent quality one. And if you want to know what that is, just do some research. If you're not sure, shoot us an email, fantasticcruising at gmail.com. Uh, I can give you some recommendations. Although I will tell you, I cannot use this mask for a variety of reasons. But first, I want to tell you what's cool about this mask, because there is some cool stuff. It does have a dry snorkel built into it. This doesn't bother me as much on these because... If you're using this mask, you're not going underwater. And it's a big, large bore snorkel. It sticks up in a spot where you're not, not as likely to dip it under the water. So I think overall, your breathing experience is going to be much better with this type of dry snorkel than a regular type of dry snorkel. Um, it does come apart so you can so you can pack it away. It's not super easy to do though, so I'm not going to take it apart, but it's not it's not impossible. Uh, so, you know, if you're packing for a cruise or something, you can like kind of fold it in. It's bigger than a regular mask, but it's not huge. Okay. Some advantages of this is that it has a huge field of view. This thing has got a wide open visibility on it. So you can really see all around you. And I know that's something that people really, really like because there's nothing down here blocking your view. Over here, it goes well to the side. And so it's great for visibility. Um, Another thing that people like about this mask is that you can breathe through your mouth or your nose. You can't do that with regular snorkeling. And this is a real problem for some people. They don't, they're not comfortable just breathing through their mouth. 
They're, they're always trying to breathe through their nose. If you try and breathe through your nose while you're snorkeling with a normal snorkeling setup, you're going to fog your mask. You're going to have problems. Okay. It's going to, you're going to have, you can get over it though. You can learn to do that. Everybody can learn to do that, but, but you don't have to with this. You can talk with this on. If you get water in it, it has a, a purge valve here and you stick your head out of the water and all the water pours out. That won't happen. There's purges on masks that you don't see as much anymore, actually, because maybe people finally got it. That they're <laughs> stupid for that kind of mask. But um, but the water doesn't come out automatically. Just like the snorkel, you have to still exhale. But this one, no, it'll just drain right out. Okay, so this, this is a great mask for somebody who's going to stay on the surface. This is a great mask for somebody who is not very comfortable snorkeling. Uh, you just need to be a little bit careful if it's going to be uh, an area where there's going to be a lot of stress and stuff. You want to make sure that you take this off every now and then. Take a couple breaths. Make sure you're doing okay. Dot, don't snorkel alone. Snorkel with a buddy. Keep eye contact. But honestly, um, the issues with these are not really a big problem for decent quality ones where the their structure is so that you exhale. It goes to a different place than when you inhale and also... Uh, in most situations where people snorkel in the Caribbean, this is not going to be an issue either. So I wouldn't be too concerned about that. Um, here's here's why you don't want this mask. Okay? Can, I, can I share one yeah. complaint that I have on this mask? Sure. Um, my hair, one thing with mask is you don't want your hair in it because that messes with the seal. Because of the way that the straps are on this, when you put it down over your head, it pulls my hair down in front of my face. Oh, okay. So I don't have that problem. That's even if my hair is up, I I have that problem no matter what. So that is my one complaint about this type of mask. Okay. So, um, all right. So here's why I don't like this mask. If you have facial hair on your chin, this mask is not going to work very well for you. I know like Tony, Tony Dials said he's been able to use one. Uh, I cannot. It, every one of these I've tried, they leak if I have a beard at all or goatee. They just they just leak like the Titanic, so that it's it's horrible. It's horrible. Uh, there, but that might be something you can work out and figure out how it works, like Tony did. Um, there are some solutions that you can use with regular masks. I don't know how well they would work with this, the, but the really the reason that I don't use a mask like this is it's just not necessary. This is training wheels. It's bulky, and what you cannot do very well at all with this mask is swim underwater. I see people do it to try and prove that they can do it. But I guarantee you, if you take this mask 20, 30 feet underwater, um, you're going to get a face hickey like the alien in the movie Aliens. You know, like it's it's not going to be good because here's what happens. The air that's in this mask, when it goes underwater, because of the pressure, that air condenses. And so the mask is, it's hard. It's not going to move. Something's got to move when that air compresses. It's going to be your face. Your face is going to go and suction in. Now, this is a problem with regular masks too, but you simply solve this by exhaling through your nose and you fill it with more air and it, it adjusts for that you know new amount. Uh, you could do that with this, but if you try to fill this with enough air to compensate, you're not, you're going to have to go back to the surface because you just blew all your air. So you know, it's not going to work very well. Uh, and it's, and it's going to happen so fast. Plus you have this big air pocket again, just like with the snorkel, every bit of air that you take underwater with you is a flotation device that you have to fight to, to stay down. So you don't, you don't want that air pocket on your face. It's not going to be, um, it's not going to be very good for that as well. So great for people that want to stay at the surface Great for people that are not super comfortable with snorkeling and um, they probably aren't going to snorkel a ton or maybe when they do, they're going to do calm water snorkeling, good visibility. It definitely, there's definitely a customer that this fits, but if you're a serious snorkeler, um, you're not going to be happy with this after a while, after you start to get good at snorkeling, you're going to have to take those training wheels off. So, but it does have a market and it might be for you. All right, let's talk about masks, my favorite. Okay. Not the stupid ones we have to wear all the time now, but... Yeah, those are not, not the favorite. Now, there are a lot of masks out there. 
And uh, we have a lot of masks. Yes, we do have a lot of masks. <laughs> and there are tons of options and things like that. But here's what I'm going to tell you when it comes to masks. If you can go to a dive shop, buy your mask at a dive shop. If you can buy any of this gear at a local dive shop, please do that because support dive shops. Local dive shops, like a lot of other industries, are suffering now because we can buy everything online, which, hey, I, I'm not saying I never buy dive gear online. I do. But uh, I try and buy locally. You want to support these shops so they can stay in business. And also because you're going to get good customer service in most dive shops and you're going to get a better product. And if you have issues with it, you're going to have somebody to be there to help you fix it. So th definitely, if you have one near you, go to a dive shop. What I would tell you not to do, do not go to Walmart, Target, uh, Dick's, whatever sporting goods store. Don't go there and buy your mask, okay? Probably you're going to get a subpar mask. You might not, but the quality that they typically sell is going to be a low quality mask. If you're going to buy a mask, and usually, here's what you can tell. If, you're, if you buy a mask and it comes in a kit with a snorkel and fins, especially those little mini fins, and you're paying like 40, 50 bucks for it, you're getting what you pay for. <laughs> so you might they might work for you and they might be great. It might be a really good mask for you for like a one-off or something like that. But I would say spend 40 bucks and get a good mask and it's going to last you for years. I've had masks that have lasted me for decades. If you take care of them, they'll last you a long, long time. It's, it's definitely a good investment. But here's what you need. Here's another good reason why you want to go to a dive shop. You have to try your mask on. Masks are not all the same. They come in different sizes and they're not sizes like large, small, medium. They're sizes like uh, this style mask fits this profile face better. And sometimes you might see a couple sizes of that design, but usually you don't. So the only way you're going to know if a mask fits is if you try it on. So how do you try on a mask, Kimbra? So I don't have to take my glasses off. Oh, I'm just going to make, make you do it. it. You put it on your face without the strap and suck in. Now, if she inhales and the mask stays, then it's a good fit. If she inhaled and the mask fell off, like, like that when she stopped inhaling, that is not a good fit. If you inhale and your mask falls off, then it's going to leak when you wear it in the water. It's going to leak. So that's not a good fit for you. Different people have different widths, lengths, how, how your nose fits in there, all these things you can only tell if you try a mask on. So I highly recommend that you try. If you're going on, if you don't have a dive shop near you and you're going on a cruise in Florida and you're going to be here like a day before, see if there's a dive shop nearby because dive shops in Florida usually have good deals on stuff because there's a lot of them. So there's competition. So they have to have good deals. You could spend $200 on a mask, but you don't need to do that. 40, 50 bucks, and you're going to get a good quality mask. 60, 70 bucks, you're going to get an excellent mask. And you may get just as good of a mask for 40 or 50 bucks, to be honest with you. Uh, you could spend more. I have masks that cost more than that. Uh, you could spend less. Now, another feature of this mask is that it is a single pane mask right here, single panel, which is great. It's good visibility. Um, the disadvantage is, if you wear glasses and you can't see without them, you can't get a prescription in this. It's got to be a two pane mask. Now, some people that do have that requirement will get masks with prescription lenses. And it's again, a dive shop. Most dive shops can get order those for you. It's going to limit you on which mask you can wear. So most of the people that I know, including this one right here, that need glasses. I don't need glasses when I'm diving. So I, I just need them to read. If somebody is a mod in here, can you remove that last comment? Oh, geez. Yeah, thank you. Um, but they usually just wear their contacts. So, um, so yeah. I wear my contacts. Yeah, and contacts now, people get disposable contacts. They're not super expensive. So if it washes out, not the end of the world. If you're going to do that, bring some extra contacts with you. So if it yeah. happens, I, you're I set. I personally can also see without my contacts. If you just like totally can't see without your contacts, um, then maybe 
for snorkeling, I don't think it's a big deal. Um, like if you're diving, then maybe a prescription mask would be worth it. Yeah. So it's really, it really depends on what you're comfortable with. Now, another feature of this particular mask is that it's got the side windows here and these side windows are, are nice. Uh, they give, I don't know that you can see, do you think you can see better through these side windows? Um, I don't know if I've ever used that mask. No, have you, you've never used one I've of the used side it windows? I've used once, but sorry, you're I'm booting the troll. Yeah. Yeah. See ya buddy. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, so what this does for sure is it lets more light in. So some people like that. Um, there are different factors that contribute to your visibility when you're wearing a mask. One of them is how big the mask is, how close it is to your eyes, and then whether it has features like this. So uh, for me, I've never noticed. I've had masks like this. I didn't really notice a big difference, but you won't know for you unless you try that on. Uh, I would say, though, it's probably not going to be that huge of a difference if you do notice it. Another feature that this mask has is it has one of these mask straps on here, which is really nice. You can buy these and you get really cool ones. Like this one has dolphins on it, um, all, all kinds of stuff. Um, there's another, another I know, one. I got it. Okay. Uh, we must be getting popular, Kimber. We have trolls all of a sudden. Two back to back. Right, wow, it's crazy. It's they probably must the same, be friends. Probably the same idiot. Anyway, um, these are great. They're neoprene. And what they do is if you have hair, they keep it from getting tangled. If you don't have hair, then they keep you from getting sunburned. So it's a win-win. They make it really easy and comfortable to slip the mask on and off. So that's a pretty cool feature. And you can add that to almost any mask. Okay. So that's an option. Then you have a mask like this. This is Kimbra's mask. So this is the two panes. Again, she doesn't have prescriptions in it. It's a pretty, what we call low volume mask, which has to do with how much air is, is in the middle there. We got another one? No, no, no. Oh, okay. Um, Sean said he would help if he had a wrench, which oh, I'm need, going yeah, to give him. Yeah, we need to distribute some more wrenches. Yeah. This is an interesting, this is a scuba pro, okay? But one of the cool features about this is this ski style strap. This is something we're starting to see now in the in the industry. And it's it's pretty comfortable. Um, it's pretty convenient. It's got a little button here that you press and you can unstrap it really nicely. Another feature of this that I kind of don't know if I like it or don't like it is this is your snorkel keeper. So this would not work well with one of those big dry snorkels because it's just a little loop. But for the snorkel like Kimber has, it works pretty good. What is your What is your opinion of this? Do you like this feature? Would you rather just have a regular snorkel keeper? Um, I don't mind it. It's real easy when it's wet. It's real easy to move it in and out. So I don't have any problems with it. Um, and because it's connected to the strap, I don't have to worry about like, like the other ones, it gets caught in my hair and stuff. So mm -hmm. I also really like this strap because when I put my hair up, um, those other straps, um, if it's just the rubber ones, it, it like pulls my hair. If it's got the, the, what's this called neoprene? Co cover oh. on it it's too big and it like my hair like ponytail is either too high or too low so i really like this this strap so yeah so that's another option it doesn't give you as much coverage if you're bald for getting sunburnt but you can always wear a hood or just slather on the sunscreen although you know it's best to have less sunscreen if possible um this is a mask that i have that is going to cost you a little bit more money because it's what we call a rimless mask, which means that it's easier to make low profile. It's just, it's supposed to be a little more comfortable. They're really hard to get them set up when you first get them. I added this strap on. I had a mask like this uh, years ago, and I don't know why this isn't more popular. I had a hard time finding one like this, but this is a cool strap for tightening. So I can just pull it to tighten it and I can just, um, and I can just pull this. It's easier when you're wearing it. And it'll it'll loosen it really quickly, so I can make quick adjustments on the fly with this mask. It's really super comfortable, so if I'm going to be wearing it a long time, it's nice. But um, but I spent over a hundred dollars on that mask, so you you get what you pay for in most cases. But it's more comfortable and that sort of thing. Now, um, this is my most recent mask, which I love love this mask. It's and the reason I love it is because it's super light, it's really comfortable, and it's got just it's got the two windows, but it's so close to my eyes that my visibility is really good. 
Uh, it's pretty easy to adjust. And I added this little strap onto the back of it. It's got a weird blue camo, which I didn't like at first, but it's kind of grown on me. I kind of like it now. Um, and, and here's a good example. When I was looking at this mask, I was like, oh, that's a cool mask, but I'm probably not going to buy it because it's probably really expensive. And I asked how much it was. It didn't have a price tag on it. It was like 40 bucks or something like that. 40. It was 60. Was it 60? I thought it was like, no, I think it was less. Was it? Because the one, because I was looking at two masks and one was like 65 or something like that. And I was like, well, I wonder how much this one is. It's probably more. And I think it was like 40, 45 bucks. And I was like, well, that made that decision really easily, easy. And I, I mean, I love this thing. So it's, why would I want low amount of air here? Because when I'm underwater and I have to exhale to equalize the pressure, it's less I have to blow into the mask. And also, um, you'll learn if you if you get into snorkeling, scuba diving, you'll learn to to blow the water out of your mask, and you just either you just tilt it back and exhale. Well, the less air that's in there, the quicker it is to get the water out of your mask. So I can swim underwater, put this mask on while I'm underwater, and come up with no water in my mask. And it's a really easy technique that you can that you can learn so uh so again go to a dive shop if you if you have one and try and try and try a mask on try different ones try different styles and see what you like see what works best for you for comfort what works best for you for for view and then think about your uh use case scenario but really all those little bells and whistles i can i could dive or snorkel with any mask as long as it's comfortable and it fits me it's going to work just fine. So uh, not a problem. There are other features like tinted glass, which by the way, here's another feature about masks like this. These masks are, are usually going to be, especially if you get them at a dive shop, they're going to be tempered glass. Okay. So they're going to, they're going to clean very easily. They're not going to scratch very easily. Whereas I don't know what's going on, but we are like getting Troll, Troll city. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe it's because it's a Saturday or something. I don't know. This mask is made of plastic and it's going to scratch really easily. So that's another thing to consider. When you get a mask, you do have to prepare it. Um, Larry asked if you can get like tinted sunglass. Yes. Yeah, yeah. You can, depending on, again, certain designs offer that feature, but you can get all sorts of different tints depending on the, the design or the the brand and style of mask, but there are quite a few that offer different tints and stuff. So, and they're designed for different uh, things. Um, yeah, I prefer. Well, these actually these are tinted. I think these have a little bit. You can kind of see it's a little bit of a tint to them. You can see when I when I move it and stuff. Um, but yeah, you can get that. But when you get your mask, you're gonna have to clean the the inside of the glass. Not on the full face. Don't do that with the full face. But the reason you have to do that is when these are made at the factory, there's a film on them and that film will make them fog up. There are some masks coming out today that have a, a new anti-fog film on them. I think Cressy makes those and there may be some other ones and those may, you don't, I don't think you do that on those. So, you know, check with the person you're buying it from. But in most cases, you got to get that film off. Otherwise, it's going to fog up on you instantly. And so you're going to use, traditionally, we would use toothpaste, not gel, but toothpaste. It's got a little bit of a grit on there. And you just rub it in, rinse it out, rub it in, rinse it out. Um, those rimless ones take a lot, but this style, you do that a couple of times and you're good. They also make mass scrubs for that that are basically just a gritted material or a liquid that you put in there and you use it to clean that out. And if you do that, your mask is still going to fog up unless you do one of two things. One thing you can do is you can buy um, anti-fog, a defog, and it comes in gels, it comes in uh, liquids, it comes in these weird, like, I don't know, what would you call that? Like um, hard one. Like a, like a balm. Like a balm. Yeah. Um, in my experience, the gels work the best. You just need a little bit. You get a little bottle. It'll last you a long time, just a little bit, and it'll keep your mask from fogging up. You yeah. put it on there. Yeah. You rub it in. You rinse it off. You're good. The it, one we like is called spit. Right, which is appropriate because 
I never bought that stuff until I had problems with my rimless masks. I didn't realize I hadn't cleaned them good enough yet, and they kept fogging up on me. I have always traditionally just used spit. Spit works really great. You just, just like in Jaws. Remember Matt Hooper and Jaws? Rub it around, rinse it off. You're good. I mean, I will do that, and I won't need to retreat it unless I, like, take the mask off for a while, if it's in the water or something like that. Like, normally, if I'm snorkeling for an hour, unless I do something where the mask comes off my face for a long time in the water, I won't have to retreat it with anti-fog, yeah. and it will not fog up. And I think a lot of dive boats use, like, the baby shampoo and water yep. mix. Yep, you can use baby shampoo and water. Uh, in my experience, that doesn't work as well, but I that, think, I think literal spit or the spit you can buy work the best. Yeah. But baby shampoo does do the trick. So, and if you are snorkeling and you're out quite a ways and you get, it just starts to fog up, you didn't get it good enough, or you're just having issues with it. You can always just tilt your mask down, not with the full face, the full face don't fog up. That's a, another asset for those. You tilt it down, let a little bit of water run in, and then you just either blow it out or just stick your head up out of the water and it'll, it's going to fog back up if that's what's going on, but it'll help you for a few minutes. The one thing about those full face masks is that they have um, the way that the air flows through here. You're not breathing in this space and there's airflow that goes over it and it keeps the mask from fogging. And this works pretty well. Uh, it's not a hundred percent, but it works from what I've seen, again, I haven't really used these masks because they don't work for me, but from what I've seen, they do work pretty well. Now, if you have a mustache and you don't want to shave it off um, and you're snorkeling, you are going to get water in your mask. You're going to have to learn to clear your mask. Or you can take um, either Vaseline and you can slather Vaseline. It's very attractive slather Vaseline on your mustache. Uh, some people will not do this because they say that it will rot the silicone. It'll start to, to you know, kind of break down, break it down and stuff and, and make it fall apart. Um, that may be true, but other people do it without any problem. So it's like for me, oh, what does that mean? Every few years I have to buy a new mask. <laughs> Shucky darns. I mean, you wouldn't though, if you didn't do that or may, you know, if that is a thing, the other thing you can do is you can buy stuff that is silicone safe, that is made for that and it will work, but it's, it's just a lot more expensive than Vaseline to do that. So those are some options. I don't like that. If I'm scuba diving, it doesn't bother me because I'm swimming and I can easily just clear my mask every now and then. Um, if I'm snorkeling, it doesn't bother me, but if I'm free diving, I have to shave this or use that because when you swim underwater really fast, the pressure change water can pull up in there and I've had it shoot up into my sinuses and give me sinus infections, which is no fun. And then you get like, I've gotten like reverse blockages. It's, but this is, I'm talking about swimming down like 50, 60 feet underwater. So if you're not doing that, you don't really have to worry about that. But if you are, then that's something to, to consider, but people do it and that, you know, they, there are ways, but usually I can just keep water from going in my nose, but sometimes, sometimes I can't. All right. So do we miss any questions? I think we covered everything that popped up. If we missed one of your questions, let us know. Um, you want to move on to the cruise creature? Yeah. Let me just say this. This is a lot of information that we just vomited at you. <laughs> And so if you have questions, please let us know. We do have an old Cruise Geeks fantastic guide to snorkeling, which goes into more detail on all these things and more. Um, and actually, Todd, thank you again for suggesting this topic, Todd. Hope a lot of people enjoy this and get something out of it. Um, I went back and watched those. I think the information in the, well, I watched some of them. I think the information in those is still pretty accurate, but I would really like to redo that with Kimbra and also um, my ultimate goal is to make some videos that show actual snorkeling techniques and stuff 
We filmed like some of it. We just we never did. did anything. Yeah, we it. just need to, we need to do it. So if yeah. that's something you're interested in, let us know so that that will give us more motivation to actually do that. And one thing I did mention, I was going to say a tip to keep the water from getting into your mouth when you're breathing with your snorkel. And that is to learn to keep your tongue touching the roof of your mouth whenever you breathe in. I just do it by instinct. I don't even think about it anymore. When I breathe in, I always have my tongue there. And what that does is it blocks the water. So it still gets in my mouth when I breathe in a little bit, but it keeps it from going down my windpipe and causing me to choke. And so I can I can have a lot of water in my snorkel and, and I can still like breathe and get like filter some air through there enough that I can get enough in my lungs if I don't already have enough and then blow it out so I don't have to stick my head up out of the water. If you can't, then you just stick your head up out of the water, take the snorkel out for a second, it'll the water will all drain out, you'll be good. So. Sean, we use the same mask for both snorkeling and scuba diving. We do. And there, there are some that are more specifically designed, especially for free diving more than just snorkeling and scuba diving. Um, the differences are negligible. I, I would say I buy masks thinking about free diving and then I use those masks scuba diving and they work just fine for scuba diving. But like I, if I did it the other way, I would probably notice a little bit more of a difference just because the masks for diving a lot of times are large volume masks. So, cause you don't have to worry about that amount of air in there when you're scuba diving. So we have people interested in those videos. So we'll get Okay, them. cool. Okay. Um, yeah. And, and hopefully I see the Gaylers are saying, my wife says she's very interested. I tried to get her to snorkel on her last cruise, but she was too afraid. And, and I totally get that. And one of the things that we would like to do is um, hopefully help people that, that are really want to have this experience, but they're nervous about it, or they have some obstacles that they need to overcome. And hopefully we can, we can give you some information that'll help you take those first kicks in the water. And uh, most people, there are people that just can never, they just can't do it. They just, they, they feel claustrophobic. They just, they're not, not comfortable, but they are very much the exception to the rule. Most people can get past that. And then once you do, it's kind of like riding a bike. It's scary at first. You're going to fall over. But once you get the hang of it, you're like, I don't know why this ever seemed hard to me in the first place. I think that's how most people feel about snorkeling. Now, if you want to free dive with me and stuff, that's a little different, but still, uh, you know, you can do that too. I can teach you how to clear your ears and all that stuff. Right. Yeah. Clearing your ears <laughs> is fun. Uh, Larry says with uh, diving or scuba, does the pressure on the mask get stronger the deeper you go? Does. Absolutely. Especially the first 33 feet or the first, what is that? The first atmosphere, I think. So you got is the it? first 20 feet is where I struggle. Yeah. So, and that's why if you go to the bottom of like a nine foot swimming pool, you will notice a lot of pressure on your ears and stuff like that. Um, the biggest pressure change happens in that first 30 feet, 30 feet or so. Uh, after that, it's it's minor, but it does continue to happen. Uh, as far as the mask goes, it's super easy to fix that if you're scuba diving. You simply exhale. You won't even probably notice that you're doing it, and you will be filling your air, your mask with with extra air, and uh, it'll just it'll just happen most likely. Uh, you if it does start to feel tight, you just take a breathe through your nose and it fixes it. Um, clearing your ears can be a little more challenging for some people. Um, for some people, it comes very naturally. And the more you do it, the easier it gets. Uh, when you first are learning, there's techniques like pitching your nose. That's why, that's why masks always have a nose thing. Even those old school masks, like the old Jacques Cousteau mask, there was a little thing you could stick your fingers up in there and pinch your nose because that is one of the main ways people clear their ears and equalize the pressure in their ears. You can do it by wiggling your jaw. You can do it by a combination. There's like swallowing. There's a bunch of different techniques if you have difficulties with it. The big thing though is you have to do it uh, when you're first learning how. You want to start trying to clear your ears as soon as your head goes under the water and just keep doing it and doing it and doing it. If you start to feel pressure or pain, you stop, you go back up and then you try again. 
because uh, you can hurt yourself if you don't equalize the pressure in your ears. And you will know, though, it's not like you're going to accidentally hurt yourself and you didn't realize it. The pain will be for real and you will be like, nope. Um, but, you know, for most people, it does get easier. Kimbra struggles a lot with that. Um, she's getting better with it. She's fine scuba diving. It takes her a little longer. That's an advantage of scuba diving, Larry, is that um, you have time to compensate for that. Whereas if you're free diving, you can't putz around trying to clear your ears because now you just blew through all your, your air reserves for scuba diving. My, my dive buddy, Charlie also struggles. He actually wears uh, special earplugs for diving, which um, normally earplugs and diving would be a horrible idea. Don't ever wear earplugs when you're swimming underwater because they'll suck into your brain, but these are made for diving. They have a little hole that lets the pressure out. So they're designed for that. And, um, and they help, slow down the pressure equalization and he's able to clear his ears. Kimbra got some of those, but she's found some techniques that help. But yeah, for scuba diving, it's pretty, it's, it, you have more time to, to do that. Yeah. Um, so. Aaron asked um, how to keep your mask from fogging. Um, Aaron, there are some different ways. There's some stuff that you can buy called spit or defogger you can put in there. Um, you can use actual spit, just spit into your mask, rub it around and dip it out. Um, there's like a balm you can get. Um, but the, the important thing is to make sure that if you have a mask that you bought, that you have cleaned the film off of the inside of the mask. Otherwise, it doesn't matter how much spit or defog you put on there. It's going to fog up almost instantly. So whenever I see videos of people snorkeling and their mask is, is uh, fogged up, I'm just like, no, I want to help you. <laughs> so, so that's the thing. If you have trouble, let us know. And uh, we can try and give you some tips and stuff like that. And if we do those videos, we'll, we'll show you some of that. All right. Should we go to the cruise creature? Indeed. Okay, so the cruise creature today is thanks to our friend Tony Dials, who just randomly texted me uh, like a week or two ago. <laughs> it was like, have you ever covered, I don't remember what he called it because it's got different names, but he asked me if I ever covered this creature. And the answer was no. Now, this is a creature that technically you could see for sure on a cruise because they are uh, all throughout most of the temperate and tropical parts of the ocean, but you probably never will. But I think it's something that if you ever did run into it, it's a really, really cool animal. It goes by several names, one of which is the blue dragon. <laughs> this is the blue dragon, uh, also called the Glaucus Glaucus, or, or no, just Glaucus. Its scientific name is uh, Glaucus Atlanticus. It is basically, it is a sea slug, but unlike most sea slugs that hang out near the bottom, and uh, and just kind of crawl around. This one is pelagic, and that means that it swims out in the open ocean. And and they're really colorful and really cool. And um, I mean, it's called the blue dragon. I mean, that's how cool, much cooler of a name can you have than blue dragon? Now, water dragon. I mean, there are those too. I know they're lizards. I know. So now here's the thing: if you look this animal up and you do like a Google image search for it, you may come across uh, this picture. This is very, very inaccurate. <laughs> this is not a, an actual blue dragon. This is a model of one. It's Photoshopped. I don't know. It's not real, okay? Because the blue dragon, it only gets this big. <laughs> so this is why you'll probably never see this animal. We've probably all passed them on cruise ships swimming around in the Caribbean or the Atlantic or, or maybe the Pacific. I think they're in the Pacific too. So, but, but you wouldn't notice them because they're teeny tiny things, even though they hang out near the surface. Now, my favorite thing about this sea slug, besides the fact that it's got a cool name and it just looks stinking rad to borrow from plant, <laughs> um, is that what they eat. This is an animal that eats Portuguese man of war or blue bottles. If you're from Oz, which many of you probably know are venomous and pack quite a wallop. 
they are they have a a large floating portion of their body and then they have tentacles that can drag along 50 feet or so uh maybe 70 feet i think they're really long and along those tentacles they have little tiny stinging cells called nematocysts which are like little harpoons that if if you touch them it triggers them and they will shoot into your skin and bring with them a packet of venom now their venom is not as lethal as some other venoms like box jellies certain species of box jellies but it is extremely painful and because their tentacles are so long and they get fairly large for for an animal like that you can get stung usually you will get stung a lot and so they can be dangerous most of the time they're just excruciatingly painful they can even cause uh, permanent scars and stuff from their welts that they cause with their stinging cells so Pretty crazy. By the way, weird thing about Portuguese man of war is that they're not, they're not a jellyfish. They're related to jellyfish, but they're not a jellyfish. They're in a different group of animals within that phylum of Nadaria. And basically they're a colonial species. What I mean by that is the, the part that floats, that sail balloon thing that floats, the tentacles, several other parts of this animal are actually made up of individual animals living together as one colonial species. So it looks like one thing, but it's actually a whole bunch of animals living together to make one giant animal. It's like Voltron, <laughs> but for real. But here's what I'm telling you about them. These guys eat them and, and you're going, wow, that's cool. They must be like immune to the venom. No, no, no. It's not that they're immune to the venom. It's much, much more interesting than that. What they do is they eat these nematocyst cells and they have the chemistry to not set them off. So the nematocyst cells don't fire when they eat them. They ingest the nematocyst stinging cells into their body, and then they are able to, um, they move through their body, and they they go to the surface of the skin of these little sea slugs. And then if you touch the sea slug, you get stung by the Portuguese man of war. It is eating a venomous cell and then utilizing it as its own defense. I mean, how freaking cool is that? That's stinking rad. That's that is stinking rad. Right? That is that is amazing, right? So yeah, yeah, not a jellyfish, uh, Larry, but it, it, Portuguese man of war, they are they look like a jellyfish, but they, they they sting like a jellyfish, but they're not a jellyfish. They're just in the same phylum of, of animals. They float jellies, jellyfish, they always are underwater. And they have a bell that moves. They're one single animal with multicellular animal. But the Portuguese man of war is not one animal. It's a bunch of animals living as one animal. And the top floats. And it's it's like a, they sometimes call it the sail because the wind will, will move it along the ocean. But this teeny tiny thing eats them and then will sting you <laughs> with, their, with their stinging cells. So that picture, I don't know if, I always wonder when I see pictures of people holding them, like, is this one that just hasn't had a meal in a while or, <laughs> or maybe what? Maybe they already got stung and then passed it on uh, to maybe, someone else. Maybe, maybe. I don't know. They're really cool. They're one of my favorite animals just because they're so crazy weird. So anyway. You're going to pull that picture off? Oh, thought I did. Sorry. That's fine. Yeah. So anyway, there's our cruise creature. There is our episode. I hope you guys enjoyed that. And uh, yeah, we'll go ahead and close it out. All right. Well, on that note. Oh, actually, I've got one more <laughs> thing. Sorry. We've got to talk about our group cruise. Mm. So if you're interested in going on our group cruise, it is March of 2023 going out of Tampa on the Carnival Br Pride. I almost said bride. <laughs> um, to Grand Cayman, Roatan, Belize, and Cozumel. If you are interested in going with us, send me an email at fantastictravel at gmail.com. We need more cool people to join us. Because the cool level of that cruise has been exponentially increasing. We got Meg now. We got Mallory and Andrew. I am so excited. We got my mom on there. Scott. We got Scott on there. Jennifer. Jennifer. We got so many people going on this cruise. Uh, I am so excited. It's going to be awesome. So definitely consider it. All right. Now on that note, it's time to head for the horizon. And until next time, seize the day. Have a fantastic week, everybody.
Okay, so thank you guys for joining us on this Saturday night. If you were here, if you weren't here in the beginning, uh, we were supposed to be in Indiana right now and then going to Missouri, but um, like five, five of the people we were going to see got COVID this week. Four, four to five. Yeah. So we decided not to go right now because <laughs> we haven't gotten it yet. So we uh, we pushed it back a couple weeks, but it kind of threw our schedule off. We were going to be doing this podcast with some friends of Kimbra's and uh, that have gone on cruises and it was going to be fun, but we'll just have to do that in a couple weeks. So, but thank you guys for joining us. That's kind of late notice. The dog is freaking out. So I'm going to let Kimber show you her cool thing. And then, um, and then she's going to take the dog out and I'll hang out after that. So this is my fun new 3d print. I really like it. I guess it's printed in clear resin. So it's kind of hard to see like bluish clear. Yeah. But it's, it's this cool, like nautical thing. That's like a gear. It's a logarithmic spiral logarithmic gear i don't know there's there's yeah. math so involved. It like there's formulas and stuff that it I, I don't turns understand. forever and ever there and ever and it's like a really fun and fidget. they're chamber nautilus yeah so yeah. it's really cool that's all <laughs> i guess i'm gonna go take the dog out All right. So, uh, all right. So that there is that. So now we are just going to hang out for a little bit and see how everybody is doing. Yeah, I know, Larry, I tried to get Sean Alana to go on the group cruise. I'm assuming that's what you're talking about. And they're like, no, we don't, we don't really like you that much. You know, I know. We, yeah. You're going to go on all group cruise, but we don't really want, we don't really want to go on your group cruise, you know, no, just kidding. Uh, I know it's, it's really hard to go to another country across the planet. And uh, that that often because they're they are coming here in October, which we're going to go on that group cruise too. Which I know, um, I know you're not now, Larry, which makes me very sad. But um, yeah. And what did you say, Dan? Kind of like X Men Rogue of the Sea, using another's abilities for yourself. Yes, that's a good way to think of it. That's a good way to think of it. And traveling with special abilities, got stung by a, a blue bottle and it hurt for two years. Wow, that's that's crazy. I have to tell you, like we were down in um, Miami New Year's before this plague happened, and um, and there were there were Portuguese men of war washed up on the beach, and and they're still potentially toxic if they're still wet, and they're still you know fresh enough. Um, they may, the stinging cells may still be able to activate. And I was really tempted <laughs> cause I'm an idiot. I was really tempted to pick one up and just let it sting me. Cause I wanted to experience it, but I didn't. Cause it was, it was one of the first times I'd ever met. I mean, I'd met them before, but Kimber's parents or Kimber's mom and, and stepdad. And I was like, they're going to think I'm crazy if I do this. So, um, I've been stung by jellyfish, but I've never been hit by a Portuguese man of war. So I'm just curious, you know, it's, it's I know it's a bad idea, but, um, <laughs> oh man, Sean, our cruise is costing us. I can do this. I forget. I can do that stuff. $10,000. I don't care if that's us or Australian. That's a lot of money, man. That's a lot of money. That's crazy. That sucks. It's so cool that we can communicate now with people from around the world and we've got these international friends that let's face it, like 10, definitely 20 years ago, we would have never even known they existed. And now, you know, they're like really, I feel like they're close friends and, uh, but it sucks. It's still, we've, we've breached, we've breached, we've breached, we've breached the gap of being able to communicate, but we haven't breached the gap of being able to travel uh, at, at a, you know, affordable rate, really. It's getting better, maybe. I don't know. So, yeah. Yes, the Gaylor's the first time that I've read the credits. That's cool. Yeah, we, I don't know. I wonder how many people do read the credits on this because um, we've had them since, since just about the beginning. <laughs> just some of our twisted sense of humor there. Trying to see if I missed any comments here. 
Oh, Sean, have you been stung by Man of War? I mean, I've been stung on the forehead by um, sea nettles, which d- didn't feel good, but I, I'm sure it was nothing like the intensity. Actually, the most, the worst jellyfish I ever got hit by was a warty jellyfish, and I was snorkeling in Belize. And that one hurt. That one, <laughs> that one made me think about things for a minute because um, the other times when I got stung, it was sea nettles, and they they hurt, but like within like 15 minutes, like you can't even see the marks anymore. But the, that warty jellyfish, I was on like a snorkel tour and it zapped me. And I mean, they're not electric. I hate it when people think they're electric, (laughs) but it, it hurt. Like I was like, I had to like concentrate on swimming for a second. (laughs) And then I looked for, I took a picture of it so I could identify it. And, uh, and that was that Kimber is back and she's making faces at me. Why are you doing that? <laughs> Sean says the airfare alone for their trip was almost six thousand out five thousand seven hundred dollars. Crikey, that's so, a lot. So it's um really really cold outside. So whoever sent that cold weather to Florida is in big trouble. <laughs> well, just think of what it would have been like if we went to Indiana and Missouri this week. I know. I mean, it's probably going to be worse in two weeks. Yeah, but we're in Florida. So we right. expect it to be cold up north. Ah, Sean was stung in Durban by a blue bottle when he was 14. Oh. So, yeah, not good. Not a fun time. I've never been stung by anything. No? No. I mean, bees, but. You've been stung by bees? Bees and wasps. I mean, I've been stung in the in the face by bees. But I've never been, well, I guess, ants. Yeah, you've been stung by fire ants. Yeah, but nothing that's, in the water. That's not that bad, unless you have an allergic reaction. <laughs> I mean, yeah. my reactions aren't great. I've been stung by fire coral. I've been stung by jellyfish, at least two species. I've been stung by bees, wasps. Um, I think that's it. When I was... When I was, I don't know how little I was. I was at daycare. Um, but I used to have this outfit that was kind of like a kind of like a jumpsuit. Like it was just a one piece thing, like from ankle to long arm. Um, it was pink and like frilly or something. I don't know. But I was at daycare and a bee somehow got inside. Oh. And of course it couldn't escape because it's one piece of clothing. Right. And it was like, you know, it was kind of like it squeezed the the arms and right. it stung me multiple times. Huh. Usually when a bee stings, they, well, they can only sting once. I feel like it stung me multiple times. I mean, it might have, I was, I was young. So, so people will tell you that a bee can sting one time and then they die, which typically does happen, but, but it, not necessarily. Cause what happens is their stinger is barbed. So it gets stuck in your skin. And then when they fly away, it literally rips out their like intestinal tract. But if it was like slowly moving, it might have wiggled free and got to sting, sting you. Yeah, I, don't, I just remember it was Or it horrible. might not have been a bee. Are you sure it was a bee? I, I don't. I was young and something got into my clothing and stung me. Hmm. That's all I can tell you. We had we had a bee nest, uh, a bee hive that was underneath the neighbor's shed under the fence. And so every time I'd cut the grass, I'd kind of give them some space. I didn't want to get rid of it because I know like honeybees are struggling and I, I didn't want to like call an exterminator. And plus it was in the neighbor's yard. So for like two years, the bees and I had this ar- arrangement where I would just, you know, I'd give them some space. I'd cut around and, and we were fine. And then one day I was cutting the grass. It was kind of late. It was muggy, muggy. And uh, I got stung like three or four times. And one of them was like in the lip. <laughs> After that, the bees went away. Um, everyone's telling me about their weather now. Well, Larry said it was, it was going to be $1,200 for them to fly from Canada. Wow. But I know you're like way in the West yeah, part of Canada, but yeah. still that's, so, that's expensive. It's, it's 53 Fahrenheit here, which may not sound cold to you North people, <laughs> but when you live in Florida, 53 is not right. Right. Well, Dan says it's 40s out there, which is not cold. Yeah, a lot of people have told me there. Somebody Todd's said it was 20. Negative 17 for Todd. Um, 34. Oh, but he's talking centigrade. He's on Celsius. I don't know what that translates to Fahrenheit, but it's not. It's comfortable, I think. 20 degrees now. It was negative 10 this morning in upstate New York. 
39 Fahrenheit, Sean. That's two Celsius. Yeah. I don't have, I don't, I don't, I never learned my conversions. It's horrible. I wish we did metrics here like the rest of the world. No, Todd said Tuesday it will be negative 19. Oof. Ugh. Oof. Is, is that a relative of yours? There's a Schaefer on Um, there. I'm pretty sure that's a troll. Oh, good. Great. It just happens to have your last name? It just happens to have my last name. Okay. All right. And if you're not a troll, tell me, but you aren't saying words. And they so. and they have like some weird attempt at a website that I looks guess. like a fail because they're an idiot probably yeah. if they are trolls or they're really bad at communicating. In which case, I apologize if that's the, <laughs> that's the scenario, but I doubt it. Uh, cool. Cool, which is literally what we're talking about. Cool. cool. Yeah. Freezing. What else have we got? I guess we can't really show anything else because it'd be spoilers. Um, that other really cool one we can show because it's the person that score isn't going to watch this. this thing. Yeah. I don't know how effective this will be, um, but this was printed. One of the cool things about 3D printers is it was printed like this. So all these are free spinning. It's all one solid cylinders well, or spheres. Well, I guess it's multiple solid pieces, but it wasn't like none of it comes apart and gets put together like it was printed that way. 34 Celsius is like 95 Fahrenheit. <laughs> That's all right, Sean. We'll be back to 95 in probably. Actually, we don't huh. usually. We're nine, you're, we're only 95 in like the hottest parts of the summer. Yeah. Our, our average daily temperature, I feel like in Florida is in probably the mid 70s. I mean, we have hotter times and it gets cold for a week. Look at something. this one, Matt. Todd says, it's fun to throw hot water in the air and it turns to powder. So ah, you, you just know. saw the video where you did that. So in, in college, my friends and I had seen that somewhere. So we were like, let's do this. It was like, I don't know, really cold outside. So we bundled up in our coats and our hats and we boiled water on the stove, poured it in cups and then ran down our three flights of stairs because we lived on the third floor apartment and went outside and like pulled our camera out and then went one, two, three, go. And it all went and it was really cool. And I showed Matt that the other day because it popped up on Facebook as a memory. Yep. Had you seen that before? I've I've seen people do that. I hadn't seen you do that before. I hadn't seen that video. But, he also yeah. didn't think it was me in the video. I didn't realize. I, I was just thought you were showing me a video. I didn't know it was you in the video. I mean, you were barely in it. In the first video, I was, could not, not even see you. You were you like, see the back of me. Okay. You okay. don't recognize the back of me, Matt? Wearing a hat, a full coat from like 10 years ago or something? No. No, I did not recognize you. And your hair was tucked in to your coat, <laughs> which is weird to me. That seems weird to me. That I was wearing a hat and a coat? No, that your hair was tucked into your coat. Oh. Or it was up or something. It was up. Oh, it was up? Okay. Yeah. I thought it was like tucked into your coat. Like, who does that? Yeah, no, I don't think it was tucked into my coat. I mean, not purposely. <laughs> like, I don't tuck my hair into my coat. It might get cold, but <laughs> I think it'll be okay. Yeah. 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 What else? Anything else? I don't know. Do we have anything else cool to show that we can show? Um, Can't show that. You can show you can show the blue one, huh? the blue one over oh, there, there or the gray one that's not, it's broken, but like where the legs on there doesn't work. Yeah, here's another thing that uh, got printed. So kind of like Todd sent us those cool articulated uh, sharks and stuff. So we did we did this lizard. It's a lot harder on a resin printer to do this kind of like the. The other printers are, are much better suited for that, but we made it work mostly. Yeah. So I'm trying to come up with some more fun stuff. I think, I think I'm going to print that bus that you want solid. I know you said to hollow oh, the, it, the but creature I'm one? just going to print it solid. Yeah. That's what I was thinking too. I found a Dumbledore bust. I'm really excited to print that one. <laughs> All right. I don't have anything else. Do you have no, anything else? I don't have anything else. Do the people have anything else? Problem when you ask that is that there, there's, there's like a, a delay. delay. So yeah. So then I just <laughs> sit here and wait. I don't think so. 
Uh, the good news is everybody that has COVID that we are going to see seems to be doing okay. So that's good because um, they're not exactly spring chickens. So we're going to, so hopefully that'll be good. Yeah. Um, Todd said, yeah, but yours are smoother than the FDM printer. That's true. They're but smaller though there's, too. Well, unless we get a bigger printer. <laughs> Kim Brat, you know what is proving to be difficult for our crews? The, the travel, travel insurance. insurance for the cruise. Oh, interesting. Oh, probably because of your airfare and stuff. And like, because travel insurance is cheap. Yeah. But not maybe when it's trying to cover all that. Tony was asking me about travel insurance today for his. Larry sent cruise. you a message. Giller said, nope, we got nothing. And there, look at that, Professor oh. Traveler. We were just talking about you. Hey. We were talking about that, how how we got all these cool people going on the group cruise. And, and your name was your name was shuffled among those cool names, cool people names. <laughs> got your message, Larry. I will reply after this. Does Larry have a wrench? We should give Larry a wrench. I don't know. Him. Larry, do you have a wrench? Do you want a wrench? We need to give more people wrenches. Uh, since we're if we're gonna start having trolls now. Then the wrenches never, need to be distributed. Like, what do we have? Four back to back. Yes, you, Scott. <laughs> well, that's the way. It, it's probably the same person with different accounts or something like that, or the same two twelve-year-olds that are amusing <laughs> themselves. Um, Don said you will have to print. You will have a print farm. I soon. know. I know. I'm like, what are we going to do with all? I don't even know what we're going to do with all this stuff. It's ridiculous. The I, Carnival Protection Plan is for us residents only. So uh, we go through, we don't go through carnival for our cruise insurance. However, um, I don't know how that works with international folks. I don't either. And I, I told, actually I told Tony today, he was asking me about it for his cruise. I personally don't really understand insurance and how it works. Right. So I can sell it to you, but I can't answer any questions about it. <laughs> well, I mean, so we know that there are certain groups that, that um, Cruise Brothers recommends that, and we've used, and uh, we've heard good things about those. Um, I would say, Sean, reach out to Cindy and see if she can hook you up with cruise insurance. Yeah, she might have better knowledge than I do. Well, and plus, she's the one that booked their cruise. So right. Um, I would definitely reach out to, to Cindy and see if, if she has a solution for you there. Cause, um, depending on what you would want the insurance for, like if you want insurance to cover like your airfare and stuff that, that I don't know how that all works or the expense, but if it's like normal cruise insurance for like covering you while you're on the cruise and stuff, it's still maybe different because you live internationally. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not going to make things up that I don't know the yeah, answer I, to. I, don't so know. I, should, I should just shut up because I don't know. Cruise in, or insurance in general. Like, I don't even understand my, like, regular insurance. Huh. The Gaylor said, from New York, we can't use Carnival cruise insurance. That's huh. interesting. I wonder why not. Oh. Oh, yeah. Never mind. I need to send you something I got today about Royal Caribbean. I will be having my 50th in October. Oh. And RCL has a four-day on October 3rd out of Long Beach. Oh. Oh. Well, we can't in October because we'll be going on. He said, "Come join us," but we'll be. Oh. That's the month of the of the group cruise that we're going on. Yes, Chubb is is who I book through. Scott. Yeah, yeah. Um, and Scott's another travel agent, and um, so he also has some familiarity with travel insurance. But again, I I don't know how it works with international folks and stuff we can get coverage for everything but the cruise huh that's weird that is weird i can tell you that like insurance on on our cruise like for an eight night cruise on carnival similar to the one that we're doing with the group cruise for my mom who's in her 70s it was it was only like 70 bucks or something like that wasn't it uh, or was it even that much? I don't even think it was that much. And that was so, yeah. Yeah, it's it's really cheap. There's also limitations on getting insurance, depending on what it's for, like a certain amount of time after you've booked. And then I don't know how things are working with 
with COVID. With COVID and stuff like that. But yeah, there's there's just a lot. Oh yeah. I, and Larry, Larry can has got oh can't sell insurance yet. Okay. Huh. Huh. Oh, Todd will be a wrench too. Yeah, I just saw that. I'm going yeah. in to add him. Yep. I'm gonna have literally everyone that watches regularly is going to be a wrench. <laughs> so we're just gonna have like a chat full of wrenches. <laughs> Yeah. Don't mess with us. <laughs> we are well armed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I think that the trolls start, I don't know. I don't know why we're getting them. We don't have that many people <laughs> on here. But like when, when I used to do the Cruise Geek slides, we would get trolls every week. And I know the, the bigger you get, the more trolls you tend to get. But whatever that's the world we live in i guess so okay well um should we wrap up we've been on here almost two hours have we oh okay i mean yeah almost two hour hours and 40 minutes right so let's go ahead and wrap up okay uh we want to thank you guys for hanging out with us tonight. We had a lot of fun. Hope you guys had a lot of fun. And do yeah, send us emails uh, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, anything you want us to talk about on the podcast, cruise creature suggestions, um, anything. You know, comments, critiques, whatever. We welcome all of it if as long as it's constructive and and polite. Fantasticcruising at gmail dot com, and uh, yeah. And if you're interested in our group cruise in 2023, fantastic travel at gmail.com. That's right. Um, if you mix up the emails, it's fine. I'll fix it for you. But <laughs> <laughs> you can email us. At and, if you wanna, and if you want to go on a group cruise that we're going on, that's not our group cruise, then you can join us in October with the Down Under Cruisers and Spikers. And I can never remember all the other people that are officially <laughs> part of the group us cruise. Us and more. Us and more. There's another one too. It's just, I think it's just the three of them. Is it just the three? I thought there was four. I think it's just three. Okay. But yeah. I don't know. We know spikers and of course down under cruisers. I don't think I know down under cruisers. I don't know. I mean, Alana's all right. <laughs> <laughs> Alana's going to jump out of a cake for me. So. That's right. So there's a reason to go right there. That's right. <laughs> All right, guys, have a good night. We'll see you next week, probably on Friday, but maybe on Saturday. We'll, we'll see. We'll figure Which, it, out. it depends on how, how the week goes. Yes. <laughs> All right. Bye.